Hachimura, first of all, how about that Jackson Hayes dunk? <laughs> what do you think? We didn't expect it. You know, we, uh, I think it, he, he fell so hard. In the first half, so I, we 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 were worried about it, but you know, I guess I guess he was fine. You know, it was it was great. Yeah, looked pretty easy for him. He just went out, put it between his legs, no problem. Yeah, he actually did that during the warm ups, but I didn't think he got like that. So yeah, it was it was a, it was pretty impressive. All right, another efficient scoring night for you, Rui. Really have found your rhythm, found the places that you like to attack within that starting lineup. But what's been working for you? It's just play for each other. You know, we we trust each other. We share the balls and all that, so yeah, that's that's helping us right now. And I think we gotta you gotta keep doing the same thing. Four wins so far on this trip, just the one loss, but one more game to go against Washington. What's important for you guys to try and close it out? It's a back-to-back, -back, like you say. You know, we gotta rest, rest start right now. You know, start from now, and we we just gotta focus on next game. And yeah, we just gotta play hard. You know, they play so hard, so yeah, I know I know the team. So yeah, you gotta we gotta we gotta keep pushing. Of course, that was your team before the trade to the Lakers. You know them well. Uh, they played pretty well in their game tonight against Milwaukee. Uh, what are the keys for you against that specific team to just get a win? Yeah, you just got to play harder. You know, uh, they're, they're a young team. They're trying to figure it out. You know, they have, they have almost nothing to play. So, you know, uh, we just got to gotta focus on, you know, us. And we got to beat them. Appreciate it, Rui. Thank you. Appreciate it. AD, we just asked LeBron, but how? Wh what is the difference for you in getting to rest during a fourth quarter uh, of a game, especially in a night of a back-to-back? -back? Uh, I mean, anytime we get to rest is good, but especially going to a back-to-back, -back, um, less taxing on your body going to the second night of a back-to-back. -back, so, uh, especially against the team <clears throat> who gave us a game at home a uh, couple couple weeks ago. Um, you know, play hard. You know, score the basketball, play fast. So, uh, to get a Couple extra, you know, minutes of rest uh, is always good for us. It, they, of course, had a couple of bigs out, so you were able to, you know, dominate inside. Tr looked like you were searching for your jumper. Some uh, similar case to Washington, right? They're shorthanded in the front court as well. What, what's the the mindset going into that one for you? Uh, same, uh, off to rebound. Uh, you know, um, dominate in the post. If the jumpers there, shoot it. Uh, didn't shoot it well tonight, but uh, been shooting it well as of late. Um, but yeah, just try to uh, establish a dominant presence in the in the post, um, on the glass, on both ends, and uh, give my my team some second chance opportunities. Just a quick one on Jackson Hayes. He goes up for the for in the first half and the crazy putback and lands hard, gets up, and then the little East Bay fuck in the in the second half. What do you think? It's Jackson Hayes, very athletic. Showed off his athletic ability tonight uh, with the law. I mean, with the uh, putback dunk in the first half, and then uh, East Bay off of just a simple one two. Um, he, he showed off his athletic ability. Uh, it was it was fun. I mean, all of us, you know, got got excited for that dunk, even the coaches. So um, it was fun to watch. See the biggest play. What was the conversation at halftime um, after that second quarter? How I guess impressed were you with the response? Just don't turn the ball over. Uh, you know, we don't we don't turn the ball over. Uh, we learned from the Brooklyn game, turn the ball over in the second half and uh, let them back into it. We obviously gained control of the lead again uh, in the fourth quarter, but um, in the Brooklyn game. But tonight, you know, we just try to learn from our mistakes and uh, just get a shot on goal every time. And uh, if we able to, you know, defensive rebound and not turn it over, then uh, you know we usually be good. <clears throat> What do you see from Max? He's been kind of in and out of the rotation, but when he gets minutes, what have you seen from him? Uh, he plays well. He plays the game the right way. Um, his ability to shoot the ball, get an offensive rebounds. He can rebound on both ends. Um, attacking the basket, you know, he's athletic as well. Um, you know, he's able to guard. So uh, he's just staying professional, staying ready. You know, obviously his number uh, isn't called all the time, but um, he's continuously working on his game. And you know, when he when he goes in there. Uh, he stays ready. Know, you know what the game plan is, what the schemes are. He's locked in. So, uh, anytime he's on the floor, we feel we feel very comfortable with him. Thanks, AD. Cool. Okay, LeBron. Uh, first off, for somebody that's pulled off a lot of in-game dunks, uh, what was your scoring on Jackson's little East Bay funk there? Mm, great. Well, he does. He get a chance because in-game, not many guys in NBA history have done it. So, you know, it's rare. So, it's pretty cool. Darvin was saying you guys see that a lot though in practice. Obviously, he's, he's got a quick, easy athleticism pop off the floor. Yeah, that was, that was the first time he did it in the game. So, you know, we were super impressed because it didn't look, he was super casual with it. But uh, he has that, he has that ability, obviously.
What's the value for you guys at this point of the season for you and AD to get you know, most of a fourth quarter off and have at least a little bit of a lighter load? Does that make a difference as the, at this point of the season? Of course. Yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, can't say and say not. I mean, obviously, the game dictates itself when you play the game. However, you know, however, you know, the chips may fall. And but today we had an opportunity to bump the lead up in the third, and um, you know, started fourth. We kind of kept it going early on, and then you know, was able to shut down. So that was good. We know that you and, and Mike and everybody always have a plan, uh, but you know, with with the back to back, how are you feeling at this point about tomorrow's game? Um, it all depends how I'm feeling tomorrow. You know, obviously, I feel you know, I, I feel like I just played a game. Obviously, you know, I prepare that way, so. So I feel tomorrow. The way this game wrapped up, you've been able to sub out early on in the fourth quarter and I guess start the process of prepping for tomorrow. Does that help? Or how does that help, I guess? It absolutely helps. Every minute counts. So I um, was able to get back here and get, get going on the treatment and, and on my prep to start preparing my body, hopefully, for tomorrow night. LeBron, how have you seen your reactions here in Toronto evolve over the years? I think people are kind of scared for a minute there that maybe you wouldn't come out, and then the place kind of exploded when you came out after that. It's hand. always been mutual respect and love every time I come here and play here. You know, throughout my career, they've shown me nothing but love, even throughout the battles in the postseason, whatever the case may be. Um, these fans are always appreciative of myself, and I just try to always give it back to them when I step out on the floor. The, the bench score Brooklyn, um, and it hasn't been a consistent source of punch, but what did you see from Spencer in terms of progression between Torian and then, uh, obviously we mentioned Jackson Max too? Um, you know, that's not always their job to come in and carry a big load of scoring, but we know the ability of Spence, he can get it going. We saw what he can do. Uh, we know TP can get it going at times, you know, especially from the perimeter, but tonight he was super aggressive in the end. Um, you know, Max, when Max has gotten his number called, you know, he's always stayed ready. Even as a young kid, we, we love that he's always ready to come in and give us, you know, a punch. So that was, it was good to get him going tonight for sure. The guy you teamed up with to win a championship in 2020, and Rajon Rondo announced on a podcast that, you know, he hasn't been playing in the NBA for a bit, but he said he's not going to come back to play. Mm -hmm. so when you think back to his career, what, what do you think was the mark that he made? Uh, he was a contemporary of yours, um, you know, a really accomplished NBA player. Uh, one of the best players I ever played with. Obviously, his IQ was out of this world, and, uh, you know, it was very, uh, I was very lucky to get the team up with him, you know, at that point here when I was in L.A., obviously, well, you know, being in L.A. and, you know, him coming to the Lakers, I was ecstatic about that. I knew what we could accomplish together. Uh, Doe always talked about if he ever teamed up with me, he knew we could win a championship. And uh, we did that. And then just, uh, you know, being a fierce competitor throughout my career when he was in Boston, obviously, you know, our battles that we had when I was in Cleveland and going to Miami. So, um, guys, just he got everything out of his career and more. You know, two-time champion, multiple All-Stars. You know, I think a couple years he maybe led the league in assists or was up there. Just a uh, spectacular player. Last two. LeBron, uh, comment on the report that Bronny potentially entering the transfer portal? Um, well, I don't know where it came from. But at the end of the day, Bronny's his own man. He has some tough decisions to make. And uh, when he's ready to make those decisions, he'll let us all know. But as his family, we're going to support whatever he does. Last question. LeBron, uh, the, the Wizards uh, beat the Bucks tonight. So just kind of quick thoughts on, on the matchup tomorrow. Like what's, the, what's the top line you have on this guy? Don't, don't turn the ball over because um, that fuels home teams for sure. It gets the crowd involved. We got a defensive rebound. If we're able to, you know, um, you know, stop them in one possession, we got to clean glass. And then we got to keep them off the three-point line, um, you know, because they, they shoot the ball particularly well, you know, from the three-point line and get back in transition. You know, so you know, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Your vertical there, did you decide to go for the, the East Bay Funk, and had you done that again before? Um, honestly, when TP threw the ball, I knew I was going to do it because there was no one down there with me. And that was my second in-game East Bay. Second one was the first, you remember? First the Rockets, my third year. Third gotcha. year, second year, something like that. Darvin was saying that they, you know, they've seen a lot of your dunk package and practice and such. Uh, what... It, when you do it in a game, how it, it must not come until the actual transition play, though. So it's, it's not like you're thinking about it for that long. It just kind of comes to you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, really, like, as soon as I saw TP at the ball and I saw myself up ahead of everyone, I was like, all right, I'll try it real quick because we're up by so much. All right, so you also had the putback in the first half and it, with a really hard landing. Clearly, you were able to stay in, hit the free throw, but how, how are you feeling after that? Chilling, man. You know, I play football, so I take harder hits than that, man.
<laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, what was the importance of this win for you guys, fourth of the trip, with just the one loss, and now, of course, you go to Washington. Uh, what What have you guys found, and how do you keep that going for tomorrow? Uh, I mean, this everyone's important, especially this time in the season, uh, especially because we're fighting for – playoff position and for the playing game and for all that so I mean this one was definitely important and uh, need to go stack another one for tomorrow Hey Jack, it's true for you um, as far as the, the, the East Bay dunk, I'm sure that's not your best dunk um, no so what is your best dunk I guess would be my question honestly I don't know but that's not my best dunk I like definitely a body I've caught some other time I feel like is better than that. I'm just seven foot. I'm really just seven foot, and God bless me with a lot of athleticism. So, was, I mean, I have a seven five wingspan. So, I mean, I, I just yeah, I thank God relate. I can we do can't that. relate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, your your role is like really cemented here over the last twenty five games or so. Um, how comfortable are you feeling? With, with sort of what's being asked of you. And do, do you think it kind of symbolizes sort of the way this team is like figured out roles and whatever he sort of needs to do over these last, you know, eight weeks? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely gotten comfortable with the role coach uh, and them have talked to me about. Uh, yeah, I feel like everyone has finally, I mean, it's at that point in the season where we've played enough together and we've played enough with every rotation that everyone pretty much knows their role. And so, I mean... I mean, it's definitely not enough for, or too much to ask for with Coach asking me to do what I need to do with the, my role. Uh, I do need to be better with my fouling, but, I mean, besides that, I feel like I can do everything Coach asked me to. Another one on the dunk checks. I mean, AD was um, kind of grew up as a guard and then had a late growth spurt, and he said that that's some of the reason he has the coordination that he does. Was it the same for you? Like, wh when, did, when did you grow and, and being – seven feet tall or whatever, does that make a dunk like that actually harder? Uh, no, it definitely makes it easy. I mean, I bet I have to jump to do that just because my arms are long. But, uh, I mean, I hit my growth spurt what, going into my senior year of high school. Freshman year, I was like 5'11". Sophomore year, I was like 6'3". Junior year, about 6'5". And then senior year, hit seven foot. So, definitely hit that growth spurt then. Hey, sir. Thank you. D'Angelo, sometimes you undersell your own athleticism, but obviously not quite the same as Jackson Hayes. So what, what did you see from him on, on that, I guess the two dunks, but that last one in particular? Oh, I mean, that's what he does. I mean, it's very valuable, the, the, the pressure he puts on the rim when he rolls. Um, teams have to guard that. You know, it's a short sample size, but very effective. So no surprise there. I think it was the eighth or ninth time that you've hit at least six threes, so you get seven tonight. Where did the rhythm come from this time? Is it just kind of more of the same and where you're finding your looks? Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm playing next to some guys, man. Um, they got to guard everybody, especially with that, that, that first unit. A lot of respect um, around a lot of those guys, so eventually there's going to be some open looks when, when those guys get going. Um, Brian had it going. You know, AD started getting it going. Just allows me to, you know, take advantage of it on the backside. Can you feel rhythm, like momentum building, just as a team on a trip like this, four and one now? And obviously, you got to go into Washington tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, just trying to take care of business. Um, you know, I feel like these are games that you were supposed to win. So find a way to get them done. Um, we got a back to back. Find a way to get that done. Um, just it's time of the year where everything matters. Darwin told us uh, this morning, D'Angelo, that like he felt like the overall team spirit or energy or whatever is is at a really high level. Um, you guys with the win tonight are ten games over five hundred, and I don't know if generally that you guys have been talked about uh, like a team that's ten games over five hundred. So you just kind of like with the playoffs or the postseason right around the corner. Just how, how does it feel being a part of this group right now? It's good. It's good. A lot of smiles on the guys' faces. Um, like I said, we have so much fun, you know, outside of basketball as a group. And um, I think it, transla it translates over. So for us, I think the more fun we have, the better we are as a team on the floor. Um, and it's, it's I, I've, a lot of teams that I've been on have been like that. You know, we have a lot of fun off the floor, supporting one another, birthday parties, whatever it may be, we, we support it and, and it translates. So just trying to keep it going. We got, what, five games, six games, six games left? D'Angelo, um, you said like, you know, 
this time of year, everything matters. Like results are going to be what determines your playoff path. But I'm curious about the process a little bit. Like you guys won in Brooklyn, but did probably didn't play the kind of basketball you wanted to play in the second half. Um, you had an opportunity today um, in a similar position, and you guys like really turned the screws. Um, how encouraged are you, kind of with like just something little like that, um, learning as a group from one game to another? and putting it into action this late in the year? I think it comes, it's, it's not that difficult um, the, way you're, the way you worded it. I feel like teams like that, Brooklyn, um, Toronto, those are teams respectfully that we should beat, you know? Um, so I think it's hard to win in this league. And if we, if we win those games and it's not the way we wanted it or expected it, we appreciate it. So I think that's what that was, and that's what it was tonight. Um, tonight we, it was a little easier for us. We, we we didn't play with our food, and we got it done. In Brooklyn, Cam Thomas got going and made it a little harder than it had to be. But it's, it's what it is. Guys are capable of doing that in this league. So just trying to squeeze, uh, trying to grind wins out at this time of the year is is what it's all about. Um, we all know each game is going to matter. All these games, last six games, they're all going to matter. So it's, it's important for us to just keep. Grinding them out. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, hello, uh, Elio. Uh, question uh, not related to, to the game, uh, if you allow me, about uh, Ricky Rubio. Uh, well, you were playing with with him not for very long, but you you were playing you were playing next next to next to him. Uh, you are playing great basketball now. Uh, did you learn uh, anything from playing uh, next uh, next to him at that time that you? Yeah, I mean, Ricky used to he used to dominate. You know the games when we were grow when we when I was younger playing. And when you, my rookie second year in the league, he used to dominate the games. Um, and I would always look up and, and remember his imprint on the games. Um, then I got to spend a short time with him in Minnesota. Um, and I always appreciated his game, his knowledge for the game. Um, I learned a lot by just watching him play, his, styles, his style of play. Um, I mean, he's not that athletic as well. And, and I've, I've, I see myself not that athletic. So still in little nuances that he, he gets away with from that. You know, I added it to my craft, and it was successful. So, um, hell of a career. Shout out to Ricky, man. He was, he was huge. Thank you. D'Angelo, how much of a blessing it is that you can celebrate this win with your baby on the road and not just at home at all, Los Angeles? Oh, oh it's huge. It's huge. Um, my girl, her family's from Canada. And um, just having the family out felt like a home game. Her whole family came out. Our family came out. And my son was there to, in attendance. It's always beautiful. Last one for me. You hit seven threes, and you were doing a, a lot of celebrations. What would you claim to be your trademark, Sally? I mean, you got famous for the whole eyes in your vein. Mm. So what would you claim to be your trademark, Sally, for your three? When you hit seven threes as often as I have, you run out of celebrations. So I got to practice. Thanks, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Jarvin, it wasn't the same start defensively as Brooklyn, maybe, but you seem to eventually get going. Where did it, where did you see the game flip, and as you kind of took control? Uh, the guys just got started competing harder on the ball. That was it. You know, um, we let them get downhill. It was a bunch of the halftime edit just showed those guys going around us, getting to the rim, getting inside of our defense in the paint. So the challenge, the guys, they responded. Big defensive third quarter. Um, and just, again, having that individual pride on the ball. Everybody was talking, communicating, active, uh, holding them to one shot, just getting run outs. LeBron only had to play a couple minutes in the fourth. AD got to sit the whole fourth. Is, how does that impact, if at all, the back-to-back? -back? You know, this just kind of, it's been a long trip, and you're thinking as you approach with that Washington game. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. I, I think we talked about it in the pregame presser. Like, you know, when you come out and... You know, you're trying to tighten up some things, sustain some things that we've been doing here, doing well here recently. Uh, you know, you get an opportunity like that, you, you can't, you know, let go of the rope. You know, everybody that's coming in, substituting, just picking up where the last guy left off. You know, getting stops, getting rebounds, playing with pace, moving the ball, not turning it over. Um, that, that was the key. Uh, just getting shots at the rim and had a lot of guys see something go in. And... Um, you know, it afforded us an opportunity to, to rest our big guys. Darwin, um, just checking the score. Yeah, Washington ended up beating Milwaukee tonight. Uh, obviously, you play tomorrow. They don't have the best record, but as we talked about these last couple of games, just got to play the team in front of you. What is going to be the plan for LeBron and AD? 
We'll see how they feel when they wake up in the morning. Um, I, in all likelihood, I'm sure they'll play. Um, and just, again, us continuously trying to get better, be the best version of ourselves, regardless of who we're playing. Um, it doesn't matter. It's about us. We have to take care of us uh, in terms of our style of play, you know, having a defensive identity. Um, like we mentioned at halftime, having that individual pride on the ball, um, sharing the ball offensively, uh, and, and just trying to fine tune the way we play on both sides of the ball. And, and whoever our opponent is, that's our opponent for the night. But again, us creating that foundation and sustaining playing on both sides of the ball at a, high, at a very high level. Darvin, uh, against Brooklyn, the bench was outscored 32-2, to two, and I know part of that was because that was a blowout. Uh, but tonight, you guys outscored them 38-30. to 30. It was a bigger margin in the competitive parts uh, of the game. But what did you see from the, the bench overall? What did Jackson coming back do? He, he had that, obviously, the, the through yeah. the legs dunk and transition and, and just kind of the energy and the effort that you saw from the, the second unit tonight. Just coming out aggressive. Um, Again, scrappy defensively and active and just getting out running, sustaining our pace. And that group did a great job playing with the pass. Everyone was shot ready, shot aggressive, uh, breaking the defense down, getting to the paint, finding an open man or finishing a little drop off passes here and there. Uh, just playing the right way overall with a lot of juice. Darvin, you guys, I think, it are the third best offense basically since Rui's into the starting lineup. Um, it's been a pretty hefty sample size. Well, what do you think just about the, the shot quality you're creating and then D'Lo tonight late um, as to really kind of put the game away, the, just the, the clean, open kind of paint to great shots that, you know, you guys maybe weren't creating as much in the first? I think when you have everyone that all five guys that are uh, legit options um, and you have a team that has teams that have to scheme for, for AD and bronze post-ups, ISOs, we're running the pick and roll and those guys are involved. You got guys coming over help side, defense coming over early. Uh, and those guys are just getting opportunities and, and being aggressive, not being indecisive. And we've been that group has done a great job also of doing things with pace, you know, and not stalling out. Uh, that, that, that part of our game, that, that negative part of our game, which is where we're too many dribbles or just holding the ball for too many seconds. It rears its head every now and again, but for the most part, guys are just being decisive, getting in and out of actions, just not dependent upon the initial action, but we get into a counter and an escape action, second, third side basketball. And when you have high level scores, all, all, all five guys in the starting lineup can score from all three levels. So it's just the defense is, is put in a position where they have to pick their poison. The um, Jovan mentioned it, but as an accomplished and game dunker yourself, what did you think of the Jackson dunk? And unbelievable. I mean, that kid is one of the most athletic players, period, that I've ever been around. But just you know, when we first signed him, some he was just going, you know, through his workouts and playing in open gym and some of the dunks he had and tip slams, the lobs he catches. And it doesn't surprise me one bit. You know, he's he's a hell of an athlete, elite athlete, uh, one of the best in the league and. That's just what Jackson does. Thank you. Thank you.